We're back up to 13 now. We saw Alex Goff from long range hit it about five feet by. This for par. Oh, just broke off to the to the left at the very, very end. No real damage. Yeah, his lead's now just six shots as Emily Brown, Cullen Brown's mom, just tweeted out to me in Golf Channel, uh, I know my boy is smiling down on his brothers today. Hashtag enjoy the walk. Hashtag be like Cullen. I saw that during a break on Twitter. Hair standing up, goosebumps. We're thinking of you, Emily, your husband, Rodney. Uh, anyone that ever ran into Cullen Brown said first-class gentleman. Back to 15 now, the par five, Alex Goff. Birdie opportunity. And he's just kind of cruising it in there. Got a six shot lead, don't want to get a little ahead of yourself. And Tee shot at 16, upcoming for Alex Goff. A lot of this hole depends on your tee shot. It really kind of it's framed on both sides by trees. You can, if you get a little too far left, you can get blocked out over there. If you drive it down the right side, so there's a funnel to a tree over there as well. Watching it intently, maybe a little bit to the left. Let's see. That should be fine today. Should be okay. I, don't know. Know. I don't know. They think Three it's going to be fine, but we'll see. I think he might be in some trouble at the bottom as well. Goff at 16. He was far enough back, he was able to curve it around that tree up in front. And another quality shot. Well, he is just dialed in. Up by six over Hunter Walcott. A couple holes to go. Up at 16, Alex Goff, this for birdie. Yeah, good speed. Just one of the reasons he's played so well this week. Go back down to the tee. Alex Goff. We're going to take a look at Top Tracer technology powered by Top Golf. Uh, got it going a little bit left to right, right to left. He needs to hold on. There's a little bit of high rough down there. No problem. Shouldn't be too much of an issue if he has an okay lie. Oh, white rod. Back up to the 17th and Alex Goff now. Saw his tee shot go to the left. That's, he was inside the penalty area. I Did thought he take so too. Did I'm he not take sure. a drop? I'm not sure if this is, this is his third shot. Just got confirmed. This is his third shot. He was down there in that penalty area. Little check release underneath the hole. Good chance the coaches let him know that he had a six shot lead and no reason to take any chances down there, John. Right. You could be down there for a long time yeah. if you're not careful. So I know he's not happy with the tee shot, but uh, hey, let's get this one in and enjoy the walk up 18. Hit a good tee <laughs> shot and then enjoy that walk up to the green. Head to the 17th, and we saw Alex Goff hit his tee shot in the left penalty area. Pitch to here for his bogey. Uh, needed to keep the speed up. Uh, makes that 18th tee ball just a little tighter. Still enjoying a four-shot lead, but uh, it just shrunk up. Tee at 18, Alex Goff, he's got a four-shot lead, one hole remaining. Don't go too far to the right. It's 300 to carry the penalty area down that right side. He's not. He's going out to the left towards that bunker. Softly. Yeah, in that bunker. Four-shot lead. One step closer to perhaps breaking through and win his first collegiate tournament. Carrying the bag of a former teammate, Cullen Brown, who passed away just two months ago due to cancer. Day 18, Alex Goff, a four-shot lead. This is second from the fairway bunker. Play some kind of cut off that lie. Looked like he had a good lie. Okay, who's the yeah. forward most player? Okay, not bad at all. 
How about the other three balls in that bunker? They all look like they were all within a foot of each other. He doesn't have to rake it. If you can, if, he, if you I mean, best estimate, right here, here. that's right where it is. That's good. I can put it right there. Yes. Okay, take it. That's okay. Take it, it up. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just be sure it's at rest. That should be good. I think it's at rest. Okay. Um, all right. What are you holding? Yeah, that's perfect. Fairway yeah, bunker that's perfect. at 18, Kurt, you alluded to it. Multiple golf balls in that fairway bunker. We're hearing that Alex Goff might have hit the wrong golf ball. Yeah, we got to just wait a second here and see. Well, we'll know. He goes back in that bunker. So we I saw Goff right. play a second from the fairway bunker, ended up just short of the green. Is this a blue line? Yeah, I don't want yeah, that's the one I hit. Did it have a blue, blue line? That's the one I hit. The front one? Yeah. Is that yours? Yeah. What is Probably. the ball up there? So head coach Brian Craig yeah. telling him the number one ball with the blue line, it's still in here. That's unbelievable. That two-shot penalty. And Walcott with the misses at 15 and 16, currently four back. So this now the fourth for Alex Goff. Uh, I mean, yeah. he, he's got a four-shot lead, but those misses now by Hunter Walcott. They were huge. Huge mistake by Goff at 18. Will it cost them? We'll find out. That is Alex Goff, the redshirt sophomore for the University of Kentucky. Teed off on the 18th hole with a four-shot lead. Hit it in the fairway bunker. Three of his teammates hit it in that same fairway bunker. He hit what he thought was his golf ball for his second shot. Realized he hit the wrong golf ball incurred a two-stroke penalty he is now short of the green in four and the emotions now getting the better of him at this time well i can tell you his head's spinning a little bit right now and hunter walcott still is going to have a chance uh, and he's best, aware of the situation the best golf yeah. is going to do is get it up and down for double so that would put him at seven under but i go back to what golf did at 17. he doubles 17 probably kind of in a hurry now. His head's spinning a little bit as he plays 18. He doesn't take the time to check carefully enough and make sure he's hitting his ball, and it's it's costly. And think about Walcott, the looks he had at 15 and 16 for birdie. That didn't go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. that's a It's a bad feeling. I mean, I've hit the wrong ball before. I never did it again. We saw it earlier it's a this hard week lesson. with Georgia. Yeah, we did. We saw it with Georgia. It's a, it's a really hard lesson to learn. But but how about this lesson right now as yeah. he's on the cusp of winning for the first time, carrying yeah. the bag of his former teammate, Cullen Brown, well, this who up passed and, away two months ago. Yeah, this up and down that he has coming right now, is a it's a big deal. It gives him a little insurance in case Hunter Walcott decides to birdie the last couple holes. Maybe the saving grace all things considered, it took about five or 10 minutes for his teammates to, oh, well, we've got to recreate the situation. Maybe some time to just gather himself, if at all possible. Got his coach in there, trying to help him, calm him down a little bit, get him focused on, you know, the shot at hand and getting this ball up and down. Brian Craig was a great player at the University of Florida. He has played at some high levels, so he understands from a player's perspective of what's going on in the mind of Alex Goff. And I think this is smart, Kurt, walking all the way up there. Just gather yourself a little bit, and as you said, try to get up and down, make six, finish with back-to-back -back double bogeys, get in at seven under, and hope that he's done enough. Well, it's a, it's a huge task for Hunter Walcott, uh, Walcott to birdie the last two holes, but we've seen stranger things happen, so. This now is fifth shot. Big up and down. Yeah, 
That's a good shot. I mean, if you're going to miss one side of the hole or the other, that's the side to miss on. That leaves a little bit of an uphiller. He's got that for double bogey. Would get him in at seven under, and then he'll have to wait and see what Hunter Walcott does behind him. We're going to go back to the Kentucky Wildcats. If you're just tuning in, all five teammates playing together, something very different this week at the Blessings Collegiate Invitational. And it's going to be potentially one of those other teammates' golf balls. There were three or four in that fairway bunker, Kurt, that we noticed. But what a time for... Yeah, there were four players in there. Yeah. Four out of the five hit it in that fairway bunker. They've all bunker. got the Kentucky logo. It's, it's how do you identify it. You don't want to make any excuses. You've got to own the situation. Yep. But after a double bogey on 17, Goff hoping to make double bogey here at 18 to get in at seven under par. How do you regroup? How do you somehow find a way to will this ball in? I mean, you can tell he's he's in grind mode right now, trying to make this for double bogey, because now all of a sudden he knows every shot could matter. That's all you can do. Be committed here to your to your read. You hit a solid putt. A double at 17, a triple at 18. About 45 minutes ago, Alex Goff had a six shot lead. That advantage is down to one. 76 here in the final round, six under par, one clear of Hunter Walcott, who's got a great look at birdie upcoming at 17. And his head has to be spinning right yeah. now. Definitely. Tough to console somebody that just made triple bogey and uh, gave up a four-shot lead playing that last hole. Nothing yeah. you can say. Assistant coach Ben Fuquay, teammates, trying to say the right thing if that's possible. After the 12th hole, Alex Goff had a seven-shot lead. It's now one, and that might not be the case moments from now with Walcott's birdie putt upcoming. I mean, Walcott, he's missed two makeable putts. One was a hard lip out. Didn't get it up and down on 15, the par five for birdie, but he just stuffed it at 17. In the left side of the hole, but it's in nonetheless. Now an important tee shot for Hunter Wolcott coming up at 18. So just like that, co-leaders. There's Alex Scoff making it official, trying to somehow keep himself together with the double bogey at 17, the triple at 18 after hitting the wrong ball out of the fairway bunker. Had a seven shot lead with six holes to go. Tough moment up there, man. Beautiful. Yeah. How about that? Split, split the bunker. What a tee shot. <laughs> It's okay. A little quick going that direction. Goff at six under, Walcott six under. There are still some opportunities behind them with Alabama, but if those two tie at six under par, the NCAA tiebreaker regulation, the individual tiebreaker is the low score of the most recent round. Alex Goff shot 76. Walcott's going to shoot 69 or 70. So if they tie, Hunter Walcott will win. So a short while ago when Kentucky 
was playing the 18. Four tee shots were in that fairway bunker. That's head coach Brian Craig, absolutely entitled to be in there, trying to sort of figure it out. Is any you know anything impeding one another? And it's actually actually it's all five. Five. This yeah. is the one yeah. that he hit. I, no, that's not. The no, one his hit. was sorry. A, he hit this one right here, and then the other three are right there. So all five balls were in this bunker and. You know, obviously a little confusing, but then that's where when you have a tournament on the line, that's, you're checking for your mark. So it's now really paring down to Alex Goff, Hunter Walcott. Again, if it is a tie, Walcott will win with the lowest final round score. But a birdie putt out here, outright victory would be awfully impressive. This is a very tough read. It swings hard from left to right and very fast. Speed was good. A little bit of work left. Again, NCAA tiebreaker regulations. There is no playoff. The lowest final round score, that is the tiebreaker, and that would give Hunter Walcott the title. There's more work here, Billy Ray, than I originally thought. This ball is a good four feet at least. A solid four feet, Kurt. One thing he has going for him that it is back up the hill. Walcott for par and the win. Oh my goodness, what a game. I mean, I'm just shell shocked over here at what's happened on this 18th hole. He trailed by seven through 12 holes. The door was opened by Alex Goff. Walcott birdied 17 when he absolutely needed to. And then the four footer for par at the last to win the title. And he missed it. This game. There you have it. He did enough. Alex Goff, the individual champion on the men's side at the Blessings Collegiate Invitational. We have run the gamut of emotions. <laughs> in the last 30 minutes on this final hole. Such a crazy game. I've never seen anything like that in my life. You deserve it, good playing. Colin was watching on that one, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, Colin was watching on that one, you're right. <laughs> Colin was smiling down, he's proud of you, Alex. Well done. And that is the bag. This is earlier this morning on the range of Cullen Brown, a former Kentucky golfer who lost his year-long battle with osteosarcoma, a form of bone cancer in his left leg two months ago. This week, Cullen Brown's bag was carried by Alex Goff. Cullen's parents said absolutely would love for you to remember him in that way. Cullen was just 20 years of age. He touched everyone he met. And you have to think he was looking down from high above as Alex Goff is a one-shot winner here at the Blessings, and he's down with Billy Ray Brown. All right, Burko, thanks a lot. Alongside also his head coach, Brian Craig, and uh, obviously Mr. Tyson. And I think uh, Mr. Tyson has got some for you, Alex. Alex, on behalf of the Blessings Collegiate Invitational, here's the Invitational male trophy for the best individual score. Thank Congratulations. You. Well it. deserved. Thank you. All right, Alex. It's never easy. You had a big lead. Still on the tee at 17, hit it left in the penalty area. Walk us through that 17th hole first. Um, I didn't really hit too bad of a shot. The, uh, I thought the wind was going to get a little bit more, and it just hit above the hazard and kicked down into it. And, um, you know, it was kind of one of those lies where I, in normal circumstances, I probably would have tried to play it, but it was just not worth taking the chance. So I took my drop, hit a decent chip, and unfortunately missed the putt. 
and then um, 18, you know, is a really tough tee shot, and all five of us hit it into the same fairway bunker, and I played the wrong ball, and I can promise you that will never happen again, and I've never felt so many emotions go through me and at, at that short moment, but I mean, I, I thought everybody checked it, and I swore I was the only person who was playing a Titleist one with a Kentucky logo on it. And I wasn't. I was wrong. <laughs> well, did you, and, when you uh, walked off 17, did you still feel comfortable with the yeah, yeah, that you I had? Felt, yeah, I felt in a good spot. You know, I uh, thought if I could make four or five get out of there, that I would be good. And uh, fortunately, that's not how it how it happened. But, you know, I'm still standing here. Well, after so, you hit the wrong ball, though, how did you calm yourself in between having to re-hit that shot? Uh, you know, Coach Craig walked with me and uh, just told me to get this up and down that I win. And um, he said, you've played too good of golf the whole week to let one bad decision, not even a physical error, just a mental error, one bad decision ruin it. So, you know, I just tried to just tried to hang in there and knew that uh, Colin was watching down on me and that uh, he was with me every moment. And I truly believe that he was the reason I won it. And I, I can also say that if he was still here, I probably would have came in second today. <laughs> well, did you, did you have that in the back of your mind throughout the oh, day yeah. that you were playing Definitely. there for Cullen? You Definitely. carried his name on the, the back all week long. Yeah, I had a, I had a um, his sister texted me last night, and I had a um, really good conversation with her. And, uh, Can't get through here. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, just carrying his golf bag and... Um, it, it, it means the world to me, and uh, I mean, how fitting is that? Just to win and win with his name on my bag, and him. Uh, it's just, it's surreal. I don't have, I don't have words for it. Can you, can you, can, can you convey to uh, all of our viewers right now what kind of person Cullen Brown was? He was surely one of a kind. You know, if he, he was the type of guy that when you meet him, you, you never forget him. And, and I was, um, unfortunately, I only, I only met him, I only known, knew him for a year and a half because I didn't know him before college but in that year and a half that I had with him it was some of the best memories I've ever had and uh, he was just an all-around good person and uh, always put a smile on your face and light up the room. Coach uh, can you convey a little words about Cullen what kind of person he was as well? Yeah well I, first I'm so proud of, of Alex and the way he represented Cullen this week and, and honored Cullen and um, you know Cullen was truly the the finest young man that I think I've ever known. Um, and, um, you know, it's just really hard for all of us and for the, you know, our prayers are always out for the Brown family, for Rodney and, and Emily and Catherine. And, um, you know, they're, they're having a tough time and, and, and this is going to put a smile on their face. And, you know, we're going to, first person we're going to call when we get done here is we're going to call Rodney and Emily and, and hopefully laugh and cry with them a little bit. But, um, yeah, Cullen was, he was a memorable person and, he loved people and he loved the Lord, and we know where he is now, and we're going to see him again. Coach Alex, thanks for your time and congratulations. Thanks again. Cullen Brown was taken from us way too soon, two months ago. He was 20 years of age, but rest assured, he's looking down from high above, smiling on his Kentucky Wildcats, and especially Alex Goff. The emotions of the game of golf. Alex Goff believed that that moment in time that the victory was gone. <laughs> 20 minutes later, the door was back open for him. As he carried Cullen Brown's bag all week long, the yellow ribbons in memory of his friends. Cullen Brown, awfully proud, looking down from high above.